All right, welcome to our second Five Club event. For all of you who made it, and those of you who didn't, you'll have to watch it on replay. That's right. I'm going to let Hector kick things off since we're going to be talking about a subject that's near and dear to him, which is social networking. Okay. So on the social networking tonight, we're going to talk about something that's often confused, and that's strategic marketing versus tactical marketing. Okay? And people use these terms inter interactively like if they were the exact same thing, but they're not. So the first thing, you, and if you look at your handout, you'll see it says what the definition essentially of strategic is and what tactical is. Strategic always refers to a longer term type of plan. <clears throat> it's usually related directly to your goals, and I mean your long term corporate goals. <clears throat> it's often tied in directly to whatever your unique selling proposition is. Okay? So you need to know what your unique selling proposition is if you haven't been to... Or you're going to create one if you haven't right. already. <laughs> if you haven't been to Kennedy Studios things and learned about all that kind of stuff. So think about it from the point of view like, for example, if you have a principle that you live by, like I believe in giver's gain, to be an I philosophy. If I believe, uh, if I help you, you're going to feel like you want to help me, okay? That's a principle that I live by. So when I write articles and stuff, I don't worry about giving away my secrets and all that kind of stuff. I figure that they're either going to be able to use it if they, or they're not. And if they're not, they're going to call me because they're going to want me to do it for them. So that's, that's a principle I live with. That's a strategic principle. Okay, It's not a tactical thing that I do. It's, it's just the way I feel and believe. <clears throat> tactical, on the other hand, <coughs> is the individual things that you will do to reach generally short-term objectives. And then these group of tactical items that reach your short-term objectives become your long-term strategic objectives. So, for example, in business, we normally talk about quarterly, you know, campaigns. It's the winter, it's January, February, March. In that uh, three-month period, we might have President's Day, you know, Valentine's Day, and I don't know, St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay? But those individual events in there would be tactical events, okay, where, tac where we're doing specific tactical things. You might run an ad, you might do tweeting about the different event that your party you're doing or something like that, but those are all tactical events. That whole month the, or that whole quarter might have some kind of theme that you're doing. Okay, you're pushing a specific product line. You have a special that's for that whole quarter. That's a tactical campaign for the quarter. And then you hit spring and you have your tactical spring campaign. You hit summer, you hit your summer tactical campaign. All of them should have some kind of objective that tie into the strategic campaign. So if your goals for the year were to reach 5,000 sales, then each quarter had to have some kind of numbers that were tied to that. Okay? Now, what's that got to do with social media? It's the same kind of thing. If you're trying to grow a specific group of people, like Twitter followers or Facebook followers, you have to have some kind of mechanism to get there. So if it were Facebook, you might do something like, uh, a pay-per-click campaign that says come to my website you know and, and like us or something okay we'll give you a free t-shirt or whatever it is you're doing to get your numbers where you want them to be so in social media there there are milestones for pretty much everything uh, for Facebook for example the first milestone is 500 followers you get 500 followers that's a lot of people a thousand is the next one 2,500 and then 5,000 and then it's 10,000 and so on and as you get bigger, it actually becomes easier to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? All right, but let's say you're just starting off, okay? Because, you know, I know several okay. people in here are just starting off their, you know, their business, uh, social networking. So how, what's, what's the best way to, to jump start it, to start developing not only just followers, but followers that make sense, followers that, you know, you could eventually sell to? Okay. Um, what I do is, if the Twitter followers, let, let us say, okay? In Twitter, you can search by lots of different categories. You can also search by what they say, and you can search by where their profile is. So in your profile, you can say I'm in Jacksonville, or Northeast Florida, or Ponte Vedra, or whatever. So you can search for that stuff. Mm -hmm. And when you know that that list comes up, you can look at them and say, oh, I'll follow you. No, you can individually follow the people, okay? You have to have some kind of disciplinary plan that you're gonna do this every Tuesday or Thursday, or whatever day you pick and spend an hour doing that. So if you're trying to strategically grow any social media account, you have to designate time. 
That's the first thing, because most of it is following people. Same thing with Facebook. You can invite people. Say, I want you to, to be my friend on Facebook. You just write them. You can go on anybody's Facebook account that you know, click on it, and look at all the people that are following them. Right? And you can invite them to be friends with you. You can do the same thing with Google Plus and LinkedIn. But you have to set aside time to do that unless you have some kind of automated tool to go out and do that. Now, another thing you could do is we have a product uh, that allows us to promote people on, on Twitter. And the way it works is you buy what they call seeds, which is like a trading medium, okay? <clears throat> and your picture, your account, whatever, will show up either with seeds or without seeds. But if it's without seeds, they're going to follow you just because they like you, because you read books or you write books or you're in the automotive bits or whatever you're in, they're following you because what's said under your name, okay, in your picture. But they could also follow you because you're going to give them some seeds for following you. And then they can take those seeds and then offer them to other people to follow them. So it's a trading medium. It's like a bribery medium to follow me, okay? And you buy these seeds. From Twitter? No, you buy them from the company that, that does the promoting on Twitter. They're a Twitter partner. Okay. So this is all new to me. So what exactly is a seed? Like, what's, I mean... It's just a trading medium. It, since it's against Twitter's rules to buy followers, mm -hmm. it's not against the rule to bribe them. <laughs> you can't buy them. So, okay. <clears throat> so by you offering me seeds to follow, mm -hmm. what, what are those seeds doing for me? Does that say, you, say you have no seeds when you start, mm -hmm. and you follow 10 people that each have 5 seeds. Now you got 25 seeds or whatever, mm -hmm. or 50, 50. seeds. Mm -hmm. You can now then say, okay, for everybody who follows me, I'll give you 2 seeds. But do, do, does having the people seeds... people will, will increase the likelihood of somebody following you. Hmm. Because you're going to give them their seeds. And those seeds become their medium now to bribe the next person. Yeah, and, and so what's... Right, it's like it's it. an exchange of money yeah. without calling your money. But, but the thing is you can pick, you can, you can just like with, with Twitter, you can, you can go in and you can pick categories, <laughs> you can pick you know, different demographics that, of the people that you want to follow. So you're not just throwing these things out you know, willy-nilly. Right. Mm -hmm. You're picking so, the people so that have the profile that you're looking for. I have for. a profile in there that says, I write books, mm -hmm. I like authors, mm -hmm. I like people who read books, I'm into personal productivity. Mm -hmm. There's like five, five categories that I pick and that's what I show up under. I can show up under general categories also, and I can also purchase a VIP position that means I'm going to show up and they're going to give like 10 seeds every time somebody clicks on me and all this other kind of stuff. So it's a promoting mechanism. It's, a, it's what we call a Twitter directory. It's not Twitter itself. These people have about 8,000 people using this Twitter promoting device. Right. Um, it's pretty what? cool from the perspective that you can get a lot of followers very quickly for a little bit of money. So you want to have the seeds. You don't want to be looking for somebody with seeds. No, no, no. Again, if you click on somebody who has seeds, uh -huh. those seeds transfer to yeah, you. Yeah, so that's the beauty of it. They become your owner. You own so I seed. don't have to buy them. Right. You can actually jo go in and join it for free mm -hmm. and get. Uh, you, they'll let you follow a few people every day. Okay. So okay. the buildup is slower because you can right. only follow So what we do is we have an agency account, and we go out and buy seeds in bulk. And we could do a better job of managing somebody's account because we can go in there and every day set it up so that we get it at the best price mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they, they build the fastest following. So I'll give you a real hardcore example. They tasked me when we did the social madness contest mm -hmm. to get our numbers up very quickly. We started with zero. We started with we zero started when zero. everybody else in the contest pretty much had Thousands. followers. There. So we started with a brand new Twitter account, brand new Facebook, everything. In three weeks I had 2,500 followers on Twitter. Okay. Use of seeds? Partially. Primarily. Now, I also used my push engine to do the same thing, so I was following about 100 people a day okay. once I got it over 500. Mm -hmm. So between those two, almost 3,000 in three weeks is pretty powerful yeah. stuff. Yeah, that is. Again, because that's still organic growth. Yeah. Okay, and you can set limits that says, you know, they can only follow me if they have seeds. You know, if they're out of stuff, they can't follow me. You can set up limits that... Um, don't show me any pornographic stuff. Don't don't send me anybody who's showing that a drop rate is real high. So there's some things you can set up in there to get real followers, and that's what I did. I made every I made them jump through a lot of hoops to follow us. So if they did, they were probably going to stick. A good fit. Yeah. Right. Okay. 
Um, you're not just, it's just not just it's just not just a numbers game. Right. So you actually you want the whole point is you want a following, but you don't want to just have anybody following. Not right. quality. Right. Right. I'm I'm trying to get a higher quality, and that's that's what the <clears throat> average person doesn't know how to do. Mm -hmm. That we do. So we bring two advantages to the table when we do this. We can get the seeds at a better price. We can manage it because. I do this every day. So I log into the account, manage the things, and I log out. I mean, it's on my calendar <laughs> to do it, okay? So it's part of my job to do that kind of stuff. Um, it's a, it's a, another way of growing your account. If you're looking for local followers, it's not as good because you can't say Jacksonville. That's not a category, okay? okay? They could be interested in automobiles or just about anything else you can think of. They've got like a thousand categories. They just don't have it geo-targeted, uh, geo, geo yeah. okay? How do you find it? I mean, if I were to go out to look to, to find out more about this and figure out how it's done, it's, where would it, I go? It's called Tweens. T-W-I-E-N-D-S. Tweens. T-W-I-N-D-S. I-E-N, like friends, like Twitter oh. friends, tweens. Twi yeah, yeah, tweens. Um, and again, they're, oh. they're a Twitter partner. I think they're headquartered in England. Um, Pretty useful thing, but again, if you don't do it right, it's you throw money down a hole because yeah. again, you can get terrible followers real easily. I mean, I had when I was learning how to do it, I was getting Russians following me and all that. I was like, what the? <laughs> They're not gonna be around long. Well, they ain't gonna do me any good. They never read <laughs> right. So you know, if if you do it right, it can be yeah. useful. But I mean, you can check it out. But if, if you're if you're interested in the service, talk to Hector because, like I said, first of all, we buy in bulk so we can get you a better deal on the on the numbers, and then. We'll manage it for you so we make sure that you get the right people. So how much so. do these seeds cost, average? Um, what are you talking about per well, seed, we, so to speak, well, if that makes sense? If you buy a lot of them, you can get them relatively cheap. Um, I want to say they can be, I don't, have to, I, don't, I don't know, because I don't buy them individually. I buy them in the well, tell them, tell them what a package would cost if they want to work with well, you. Well, if we were doing it for you, it cost you $100 a month, and we manage so, it for the whole month. So how many... Do I, I mean, so if you how were doing, you I wouldn't care that? how many seats I, but if I had no, to buy but, them. But how many, how many followers would you be able to generate for, um, for that amount of money? I'd say probably easy 500. Okay. So yeah. especially if you're, you know, working Especially with, if I'm heavily filtering it to make sure. Yeah. The so these are good connections. Right. And I, I'm being ultra conservative when I say that, because then if I do a thousand, you're going to be happy. Okay. <laughs> right. But I mean, you know, if you're, but if you're, if you're looking at your account right now, you know, and you got double digits. Jumping up by five hundred dollars in a month would be a pretty good job. Well, this is the reason I like it. Uh, if you're a brand new mm -hmm. and people come to your site, they see you got a hundred people or yeah, something. They're, they're, not as, they're less likely to yeah. follow you. But if you have a thousand people following you, they're more they're likely serious. just to say yeah. follow. Yeah. So they don't even think twice about it. They just say follow because so, you're so more you substantive get, than yeah. them. It's it's a peer group type yeah. of thing. If I have a thousand followers and you have a hundred, I'm more important to you. Right. From a Twitter perspective, right. does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If I got five thousand and you got two thousand, I'm more important than you. It's kind of like a popularity <laughs> contest. With from, from that perspective, yes. So, from a Twitter point of view, we get back to where we were. We're talking about strategic versus tactical. Worst thing is you got to set up goals. I set up quarterly goals. I track. I have programs that tell me, okay, this week you grew seven people, twenty people. I already know how many I'm supposed to grow every week. Okay. And I manage other specific things. So, for example, one of my goals was to interact with anybody who actually tried to engage me. Engagement for me, or from a Twitter perspective, means they, they retweet something about what I did or said. They mention me from some other perspective, okay? Um, they follow me and say something other than thank you for following, yeah. okay? Um, so if they say certain things, I write them immediately. And it, usually within two hours, I mean, unless it's after, Eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night when I go to bed, I don't watch it anymore. But then when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is I go and interact with that. If it's a weekend, I may not. I may only look at it once a day or something like that. When I'm on vacation, I don't look at it. I give it to somebody else. I actually forward my emails to other people and say, "This is your job while I'm gone." Um, but I actually have real numbers. That's the point I'm trying to get at. You have to set up tactical numbers to get to your quarterly goals, and then those quarterly goals should add up meet your strategic goal. So my new strategic goal for Twitter is 10,000 users, 10,000 followers if you will. I'd like to hit that number sometime by maybe um, April, May of next year. Should be able to do that, especially if I start doing more promoting. 
uh, uh, most of my growth has been all organic. And what I mean by that is the, the zero promoting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I haven't given away all kinds of stuff. <laughs> um, so, but I do like the specifically for my author account because I can target authors on tweens very well. All right. That's uh, what I don't have. I don't have an author account. I should. Right. So, if you have on Twitter, you can have more than one account, just so you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I have probably five. <laughs> what, what about what about losing followers? I mean, is that you is will that lose something? Some, you will lose some people, but this is how you stop that from happening. You give them good stuff. Yeah. Okay. And, and interact. It's all about content and, yeah. and, and be interactive with you. And if anybody ever says anything nice about you, you thank them from the mountaintops. I mean, I shout it out. You know, I not only I give them a free copy of my book, especially if they if they retweeted it to two thousand users, I don't even think twice about it. Mm -hmm. Here's my book. But but what he said was important because you could have a gazillion followers, and if you're not feeding any content out, what's it what's it doing for you? Yeah, that's I the first time that you got. And I'll give you an example. Yeah. If I have clients that they they did a campaign and then they stop, if they don't continue to do what I was doing, their followers will start to drop off, and eventually they'll halt, and then they go in reverse. So if they don't continue to give good content, that's going to be a problem for them. And I don't care whether they do promoting or whatever after the fact, but if you don't provide good content, all this type of social stuff is content driven. Yeah. And my rules are you've got to be able to provide four different things. One of them is useful information. If it's not useful to them in some way, forget it. It's got to be maybe entertaining. That's okay. It's got to be, and I can actually give you the four thing in here. On page two, it helps them connect with other people. Like that's what really what Facebook was all about. Mm -hmm. You're connecting with all your friends and all that kind yeah. of stuff. And interesting facts. Okay, and those pretty much cover everything if you think about it. Useful information could be pictures, videos, links, whatever. Uh, it's funny. It's entertaining in some way. Um, it helps you connect with others or it's a, a useful facts or important facts that you're looking for. Those four things are what people want in content, period. Entertainment could be eye candy if you're talking mm -hmm. about it. I mean, it doesn't even matter if you're talking about pornos, it's, it fits in one of those four <laughs> categories. That's what it's all about. And yeah. Eye candy just means something visually right. interesting. Right, yeah. visually yeah. interesting. It doesn't have to be a box of wine. So the thing is, if it's not what they want, it's irrelevant. Right. So you can't go in there and post all kinds of really cool stuff about your company and your mm -hmm. product because they don't care. Right. <laughs> it's it about what they want. Well, and if you follow that rule, it'll be okay. It's information. That's right. the important thing. It's like what, you know, any of you that are hooked up to any of my social networks know that every day I usually go fishing with uh, the, the news feeds. You know, and I, I find what's hot for my category. Obviously, you know, I'm talking about online marketing, but you could do it with anything, you know. Right. Uh, so I find things that I, I find of interest, and then you know I send them out on Facebook, I tweet them, Google Plus them. And depending on what category it is, sometimes I'll throw them over to my buddies at LinkedIn, things like that. And then of course I feed the the blog in once a month when I do the blog. I mean once a week rather than when I do the blog. Of course I do the same thing. I push it all out. So the important thing is you got to you got to be consistent. So like with the social nets, you really need to feed them every day. No, not to be a lot. It's not like doing a blog. You don't have to if go. If you want a great a tool for doing that. Your blog is going to be one because it also has the plugins at the end. Mm -hmm. as they go. The other one is Hootsuite because you can actually post to LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus, and three others from that one spot. From that one spot. As a matter of fact, you can post the same thing to all four or five and all that kind of stuff. Now, is Hootsuite free? I can't recall. It's free. Okay. Absolutely free. There's a pro model that allows you to do analytics on your posts and track your posts and all that kind of stuff. And then there's an enterprise model that's like five hundred dollars a month or something. <laughs> okay. So anyway, the the point I'm getting at, you need to be able to set goals and then track your goals. You, if you're not tracking what you're doing, how do you know whether you're being successful or not? Yeah, and, and you need to, you know, like I said, you need to make feeding the content kitty uh, habit. Yeah, it's got to be consistent. Consistency yeah. is key. That's why I like about Who Sweet. You can actually set up a schedule. So you put a post in there and it say. It post it Friday at two o'clock. Yeah. Okay, so you can tell it when to post it. So yeah. you can go out. So this would be a great way of doing it. It's Tuesday. I'm going to do my research. So I find my 20 articles or whatever. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, I plug them all into Hootsuite. 
and the rest of the time I'm just doing my business. And Hootsuite does its thing for the next week. Tuesday again, you do your research, Wednesday you plug them in, then go about doing your business. And you pick a couple of hours a week, it could be all on Tuesday if you want, it really doesn't matter, as long as you're consistent. Yeah. You should also make, a, some of your posts always happen on the same day and time. So when I'm talking in here about where and when to post, you know, they find that blogs usually are the best posted on Tuesday or Thursday. 